in a perverse sense, for people like me, uh, the crisis had a nice effect because, uh, frankly, this is what I do research on uh, models of um, so-called financial accelerators, what happens when you get into financial crises, what happens to investment, what happens to consumer spending. A lot of people like me who've done work in this area have generally relied on historical episodes because that's where we've seen crises. So now we have, um, you know, unfortunately, an episode here in the modern period. And what we know in those periods is that when you get into a financial crisis, the um, inside net worth of borrowers becomes very, very important. And this is what we saw in the collapse of consumer spending as consumer net worth declined. And in the business sector, as the cost of external financing became very high, as credit spreads uh, became very high. We also, though, have a sense of what to do in an environment like this. Very aggressive monetary policy is part of the answer. We did that uh, with the Federal Reserve. Tax cuts can be part of the answer. So I think policy has been very aggressive today much more aggressive than it was, say, in Japan in the 1990s or in the U.S. in the 1930s, taking a crisis that was very bad, but making it not as bad as it could have been. I'm very worried about this. We, we have uh, essentially a set of deficit problems in the country. The very short run, I'm not sure that we should worry so much about the uh, extra deficit that was used to help uh, attack the financial crisis. I think it's very important to be very aggressive, to give the Federal Reserve and the administration credit there. I would have done perhaps a different set of things in the administration, but the basic thrust I'm, I'm okay with. Going toward the medium term, though, we've seen a built up, both from the Bush administration and now from the Obama administration, in significant levels of spending that will have to be paid for with future taxes, and that deficit is a real problem. And then the third deficit, the one that scares me the most, is the long-term entitlement deficit because of our promises for Social Security and Medicare. You know, if you just let the clock run one generation, 25 years, we would be spending about 10 percentage points of U.S. GDP more on just Social Security and Medicare than we do today. And given that the whole federal tax share today is 19% of GDP, that would mean 60% tax increases for everybody. That's obviously not going to happen. And so we're going to have to come to grips with this. At some point, bond markets will worry about this. And it will be a problem for interest rates because bond market participants will realize the U.S. is going to have a very difficult problem with these debt levels. If I were to say one thing to President Obama right now, it would be focus, focus, focus on getting that long-term deficit down. Well, we have to figure out what our expenditures are going to be. You know, the first order fiscal decision is how much you spend. Then you have a decision of do you use taxes or borrowing, where borrowing is just future taxes. I think for the U.S., our levels of spending promises for the future, again, particularly in the entitlement programs, are so big we really can't raise taxes enough to pay for that. I don't mean we can't by arithmetic, but the amounts are so big, you know, 60, 70 percent. That's just not going to happen. It would crater economic growth. So I think we really have to talk a lot about how to scale back some of these programs going forward and do so in a way that keeps the least well-off among us fine, but asks for some sacrifices, frankly, from those of us who are better off. Thank you.